what's up YouTube, welcome to the actual third part of this tutorial where we will be going over loops and how to use them to make grid arrays of objects. Now, this is where having knowledge of programming is really going to start helping because at its heart, Animation Nodes is just a visual scripting language, nodes different than JavaScript or C++. And loops are no different. They operate just like they would in any other programming language, where it repeats a set of instructions the amount of times you tell it to. So in Animation Nodes, we can either set that number manually or we can plug in a list. We can plug in numbers, we can plug in letters, we can plug in vertices, or really anything we want. And that's what we're going to be doing today. We're going to be creating a list of objects and a list of vertices. And we're telling it for every object in that list, move it to the corresponding vertex in the vertex list. So let's get started. Now I'm going to add in our object to be duplicated today, which is going to be our monkey. So Shift A, Add Mesh Monkey. And then I'm going to drag up our timeline and hit Shift F3 to tab over to the node editor and make sure we're in animation nodes and add in a new node tree. Next, I'm going to add in our object node. I drop our Suzanne object and that's it for the first part. Next, we're going to create our grid mesh. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go under Mesh and add in under Generators, I'm going to generate a grid. This node gives us some settings to create our grid and then outputs a list of vectors. Now, it, it can be confusing because it says vertices as the output, but in reality, it's a list of vectors. It's important to point out that in animation nodes, the solid colors of dots are one object. So for example, a number or an object or a vertice, while the semi-transparent ones, the translucent ones, are lists of that type of object. So the colors are the same, but the transparency determines if it's a list or not. So here we have some settings. Right now I'm just going to leave it at default. So five points by five points with a distance of one and one between them on X and Y respectively. And now we have to duplicate our object for the amount of points in the grid. So I'm going to hit Shift A, go into the Object tab, and add in an Instancer. And plug in our Suzanne object to be duplicated. Now, like I said before, we can either enter this manually. So I can look and say, well, there's five X divisions and five Y divisions. So I'm going to set this to 25. But then if I change this, then I have to manually change this. So now this is 30. And I don't want to do that. So instead, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit Shift A, go under List, go under Get Length, add in a Get Length node, and connect our vertices to the list input and our length to the instances input. And now, no matter how many subdivisions we add, that instance number is always going to be correct. So now what it's doing is as I said before, because this is transparent, it is outputting a list of our duplicated objects. So now we have to iterate through those. So in order to create a loop, we hit Shift A, go under Subprograms, and add in a loop node. Now this is going to be the actual body of our loop. So I'm going to name this grid underscore loop. Then I'm going to go up to our main body of our program, and I'm going to hit Shift A, go under Subprograms, and under Invoke Subprogram, I'm going to add in our grid loop invoke subprogram node. You'll notice it's just saying iterations now, and there's no way to plug objects into this iteration without it doing something funky like adding in extra nodes. So what we have to do is we have to add in something called an iterator. This is just an automated way to say for every object in this list, iterate one time. So I'm going to go down, I'm going to hit plus next to the iterator, and I'm going to type in object list, and I'm going to add in an object list. And then go up to here, and connect our objects to the object list input. Now the way loops work with iterators is you input a list in the main invoke subprogram node and then in the actual loop input it outputs a single object. So that is the object that it is currently on in the loop. So in order to test this out what we can do is we can hit shift A, go to object, add a transform output, connect this object to it, enable X, Y, and Z, add in a combined vector, connect that up, and then we can use the index, which remember is our position in the list, and we can plug that into the x input. And now as you can see, it is moving all of our monkeys to that number. So when it's on iteration number one, or iteration number zero, sorry, because it always starts at zero, when it's on iteration number zero, it is placing it at the x position of 0. When it's on the iteration of 1, it's, it's placing it on the x position of 1. When it's on 2, it's placing it at position 2, etc., etc., for every monkey in our list. But we don't want that. So I'm going to delete that combined vector node. 
and I'm going to add in a second iterator. And this is going to be our vector list. And I'm going to name this something like grid points. And then connect that to the location. Now by default, it's all set to zero. But if we take our vertices output and plug that into the grid points list, you can see it duplicates all our monkeys. Well, sorry, they're already duplicated. It places the duplicated monkeys at each point in the grid. And if we change the grid settings, for example, the X distance and the Y distance, you can see it all updates in real time. And we can change the amount of divisions and everything is automated. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and found it really helpful. In the next part, we will be covering how to use distance of one object from another to affect different properties in our node tree. If you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe, and I will see you next time. Don't be afraid.